Hello and welcome to the Craft Beer Corner. For today's beer review, we're jumping into a big limited release beer from Fremont Brewing Company based in Seattle, Washington. We do a lot of Fremont's big beers. Uh, this one is no exception. It's an Imperial Stout that's been barrel aged, has uh, added ingredients. It's also blended. This one clocks in at 11% ABV and the name of it is 12th Anniversary Stout with Cherries. This is the 2022 release. So. It's been bourbon, bourbon barrel aged in a mix of barrels. It's a blended beer, has added cherries, but I'm gonna read exactly what it says on here. They give us a lot of detail and it sounds quite impressive. Um, aged in nine to 10 year old Heaven Hill bourbon barrels. Uh, another is eight to 10 year Heaven Hill barrels uh, with tart Montgomery and dark tart cherries. Um, from Front Royal Ridge Fruits in Royal Washington. And then it was also aged in uh, bourbon barrels that had vanilla extract added. So a blended beer with a different combination of barrels with added tart cherries, as well as bourbon barrels that formerly housed vanilla extract. I just expect this is gonna be a very special beer. Um, we can tell this is a nice wax dip cap, a really cool silver color to this one. So as always, we will score underneath the edge of our cap. This one is coming up quite easily. Really no problems getting scored under there. Let's see if we can get a good grip on the cap. Yep, got it off first try. Just clean up the edge, make sure there's no residual wax. Not that it's the end of the world if it falls in your glass, but I prefer to not have it there. So I'm gonna get this poured right in the old stout glass here. Quite dark, quite thick. I should know this from Fremont. I drink a fair bit of their beers, really enjoy their beers. All right, gonna slow that down, let that head have plenty of space to do its thing. It does have quite a pronounced aroma, I can tell you that already. The bourbon is really jumping out at me, as are the cherries. I'm uh, not sure what other subtleties I'll get when I get right up on it, but I'm a foot and a half away and it is a very pronounced aroma indeed. Uh, visually on this one, absolutely pitch black. So dark in fact that I can't even see any vestiges whatsoever of what's what's happening inside in terms of carbonation. I can't tell. But what I do know is it did obviously form a nice thick creamy head here. Let's just get right up on this for a full sniff. Oh yeah, wow. Bourbon and cherry, no problem popping out of the aroma profile here. There's a little subtlety of the vanilla. I'm not sure if that's actually coming from the extract itself or just part of the aroma characteristic of bourbon, which that's a relatively common trait, but it smells really, really nice. The other thing I can tell you is the malt bill also does come through quite clearly on the nose here. So you can smell this really nice, roasty, earthy underpinning of malt mixed with big aromas of bourbon, cherry, and this vanilla-like quality to it. It smells absolutely fantastic, smells every bit as great as I expected that it would, so I'm just gonna jump right in. The head has settled down a little bit here. Uh, you know what, let's just top that off just till we can get to the curve. Okay, now we're gonna jump in, take one. Big beer indeed. Oh man. Oh, it gets even better. The more time goes by after you swallow, just keeps opening up. Oh man, that is a really, really delicious beer. I had a suspicion that it would be. I've had enough of Fremont's big limited release beers. I know what they're about. And there's a reason that I pick them up when I see them. Yes, as per usual, I did get this from Tavor. I don't get every beer I have from Tavor but it's nice to get my hand on selections that are hard to find and they'll deliver them right to my door. I absolutely, I know I talk about this every once in a while. If you haven't checked out Tavor yet, do yourself the favor, download the app. Just check them out, see what they're about. You won't regret it. But back to the beer. So yeah, this is a big beer. It's, it's very big indeed. Uh, not just in terms of what's happening flavor-wise, but also in terms of body and mouthfeel. So this is 11%. It's not a low ABV. It's not as high as some of their kind of limited release beers, but 11%, that's a healthy ABV on an Imperial Stout. The body on this one, 
feels a nice proper medium heavy. It feels the part. The mouthfeel has a good bit of resistance. You could see how thick it was when I was pouring it. That does translate texturally into the glass as well. This is not one that got creamy or silky or velvety or foamy at all when agitating, but you could really feel the resistance and it does a really nice job of coating the palate. It's a thicker beer, it's a weightier beer. It feels exactly right. Um, honestly, I like a big heavy beer, especially in an imperial stout format like this. It's fantastic. So flavor, really what you got on the nose translates into the glass. Um, the first thing that I noticed up front was a uh, dual combination of bourbon and just this nice tart cherry. They specifically did say that it was tart cherries. I absolutely believe it. Uh, these are um, tart cherries and have a little bit of a sourness to it. I think tart is a better description, but you know, whatever, it's in that realm. It's not a sweet cherry. It's not like a Marciano. This is a nice, has a little bit of a kick to it. And it pairs very, very well with this bourbon. And the bourbon comes through very, very clearly. You're getting all of these nice classic underlying bourbon character traits. So there's this kind of roastiness that comes out of it. There's like this caramelized sugar quality that comes out, out of it. And yes, there is this nice vanilla quality. Now again, just as with the aroma, that could easily be coming strictly from the bourbon barrels themselves, or it could be coming from that vanilla extract barrel that they added in the lineup. Either way, it's absolutely fantastic. And then on the top of this, it just keeps opening up and kind of flavors almost immediately start moving in and out of each other. And the underlying malt bill comes through pretty early on as well. It's very roasty. Nice roasty malts has this very deep roasty and earth-like quality to it that is a nice contrast to this brighter kind of caramelly laden uh, bourbon quality and that tartness of the cherry. So there's a lot of different kind of flavor sensations that happen in this beer, but altogether it absolutely works. I love the balance on this. I think it is absolutely top notch. So complex beer, big beer, delicious beer. That calls for a second sip. Let everything re-intensify. See if I missed anything. Then we're gonna talk about this finish, but as per usual, Fremont's done it again. Absolutely a home run of a beer. Bourbon, tart cherry. Oh yeah, nice, nice layers of bourbon. Already getting these uh, very strong vanilla, caramelized sugar, brown sugar notes underlying roast gets uh, really nice. It starts pairing with that caramelization from the bourbon barrel. And that's where the roast opens up. And there's this nice, bright, fresh tartness from that cherry that pops in. A lot of vanilla notes, a lot of vanilla notes. It's quite strong. Very, very nice. Um, that opens up. They all really just kind of blend together. After we hit about the 10, 15 second mark, it's dialed back from its peak intensity but the flavors are still all intermingling and they really are uh, clinging all over the palate. And the balance, again, just absolutely top tier. As we move on to the finish side of this beer, um, I gotta say, as you might expect, it's an 11% Imperial with additives and it's been multi bourbon barrel aged. Yes, it is a long finish, <laughs> as, as you might expect. The bourbon really does linger and really what draws out from the bourbon side most dominant is that kind of caramelized sugar and that vanilla kind of aspect to it. Again, there could be some of that coming from the bourbon barrels that had vanilla extract in them as well, but either way, it's a dominant kind of caramelized sugar and vanilla vibe. The tart cherry sticks around for a decent bit of time, but it does get kind of overwhelmed by the bourbon when we get to the very, very end of the finish, which takes really a little over a minute, minute and a half to get there. On second sip, it seems like it's gonna last even longer than it did on the first one. But you're left with this nice caramelized sugar, vanilla, very clear bourbon flavor, as well as this nice roasty underpinning from the malt bill. It's very, very nice. It's very wet. It's round to the end. It's got a very slow, steady decay. There's no abrupt truncation to it at all. It's just slow and steady until it just finally flits off into nothing and then you're ready with a reset palette for your next sip. I gotta say, I love these big limited release beers from Fremont. 
I'm gonna continue to get my hands on as many as I can because I keep experiencing them like this and I absolutely love them. This is a great beer. I'm gonna take my time, sip on this, come up with my scores. When we come back, we will get this beer ranked from top to bottom. All right, so now that we've gotten to enjoy this beer, we're gonna get it ranked. So this was Fremont Brewing Company's 12th Anniversary Stout with Cherries, a 2022 release, Imperial Stout that was multiple different types of bourbon barrel aged. It was a blended beer as well. And Fremont is of course based in Seattle, Washington, 11% ABV on this one. So this is one of those easy beers and I'm very surprised because it comes relatively close on the heels of another uh, that, that pulled this off. But this is one more in that tiny, tiny, tiny cluster of beers that I've reviewed to date that did get a perfect score in all categories. So this does get a perfect 10 out of 10 across the board for a total score of 100. That's aroma, taste, body, mouthfeel, finish, head, retention, appearance, balance, feeling in the intangible and example of style. And this was well earned on this beer. Everything about this beer was just absolutely fine tuned. That's really the thing that I kept coming back to the most. Like, yes, it was very, very nice what they put together but balance is king. And balance is just one of the 10 categories that I have, but it plays such a massive part. And balance is an aspect of almost every other category as well. So if the balance on this specific category is off, it's gonna throw the score off. This was just honed, it was focused, it was well executed across the board, and it absolutely earned that perfect score. The aroma was incredible. Everything that they did with it was detectable. The taste, unbelievably good. I really liked that they used tart cherries in particular, and that vanilla extract bourbon barrel was a really, really cool addition that paid dividends in this beer. Textbook, everything you'd expect in this ABV range for the style, body, mouthfeel, uh, finished quite long, very enjoyable, obviously big barrel aged. Head retention was beautiful, appearance, no surprises there. And, and really, it still comes back to the balance. Um, I mean, they just absolutely nailed this. I've come to expect this from the limited release Fremont Brewing Company beers, uh, but this was one of the best ones I've had to date. I absolutely loved it. If you're a fan of Fremont in general, if you've never had their beers, try some. If you can get your hands on this one, you definitely want to do so. But yeah, absolutely. They're, they're one of the absolute masters of the game, especially their big, big stouts. I've had many of them. They are very, very special indeed. This earned it. This was, dare I say, a perfect beer. I would not have changed a thing. It was executed flawlessly. I loved everything that I experienced on this. I would recommend this to essentially anybody. For my money, it's a perfect beer. Folks, that's today's review. As always, I do sincerely appreciate you tuning in today. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to stay in the loop when our videos go live, just turn on your notifications, hit that bell icon, it's right next to the subscribe button. Until next time, keep your beer, keep your craft. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers.